the goal of our game is to pass all the obstacles, all the enemies, and all of this stuff, pick up collectible items along the way, and get to the door over here. There is one problem. We don't have the door. Thank you for stating the obvious teacher. So let's go over here inside of the assets and sprites and our game sprites. And here is the door. So what we are going to do is I am going to go here in the sprite mode, set that to multiple. And I'm going to hit apply and go here into the sprite editor. Now I'm going to show you one thing that if we slice this, if I click here to slice, we are not able to slice it. Instead, we will have to do something like this, you know, slice it manually. So this slice goes over here. This slice goes over here like that goes over here and here something like this and also going over here slicing I know it can be tedious because game development is not all fun and writing code and coming up with funny algorithms and so on and so forth sometimes it's actual work you know like you know coding is not actual work but you get the point so <laughs> what I'm going to do is wrap this up like this because I'm going to show you the bad way and the correct way. So this is the bad way, I'm going to hit apply and there you go. So we have our door and I am going to click here and I am going to put the door over here, voila, let me just zoom in a little bit. So the door is going to be below, so it's not going to be visible from the ground, but our wall over here, I am going to resize him just a little bit and there you go. So maybe just a little bit up and uh, voila, is it working? Come on, did I select the wall? Yes, I did now. There we go. So this is where we are going to place it. Now, of course, we also need to create animation for the door. So going here inside of the animations, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this one door animations. Now for the door going here inside of the level, because it's part of the level, I'm going to right click and create an empty. And this one is going to be door and exit because we're going to have the exit sign. Don't worry about that. Don't panic. It will come in a few moments. And over here, the door, it's going to have over here the animator and it is going to have a box collider who is a solid body. So it's a solid body and we are not going to allow player to pass by the door. Instead, he needs to unlock the door and then he will be able to pass. So I can also do something like this, just resize the wall a little bit so that it looks, you know, it's the same size as the, it is the same size as our door because it looks a little bit nicer what did I do? Okay, moving this over here, this over here. Come on, there you go. This looks a little bit nicer because it makes it look like the door is the same, you know, height and whatnot. I can leave this like this. You can, you know, resize it if you want to, but you can leave it like this as well. So now going here into the door and right clicking, creating the new animator controller, door controller, who is going to control our door and our lives. Just kidding, this door, this controller is just, you know, inside of the game. It's not going to control your life and tell you what to do. And there you go. Going over here inside of the animation tab, we need to create, you know, the open animation. So over here, I'm simply going to say open. There you go. Voila, like this. And we are also going to have an idle one, which is going to be basically empty. So the idle, we can just name it idle and it can be empty over here. And I am going to right click and set it as a default layer state. But for the open one, we do need to go back over here and drag and drop all the door over here that we have. So the door frames. And now we are good to go. Of course, over here, we're going to set the sample rate. So let's go set the sample rate to 24. But we have one issue. Look at how the door is opening. You see, it's going from up to down, and this is not something that we want. We don't want the door to open like this. Maybe you do. Maybe you do in some of your game, maybe you do. You want to make the door open like that, but I want the door to open from the bottom up. Something like that. If you like this tutorial series and you would like to learn more about game development, you can do that in my Game Development Academy where I have more comprehensive tutorials, more detailed tutorials, where I teach you more advanced stuff than in this tutorial. Link is down below for a small monthly fee. You can support this cause and you can learn something. Click the link down below and check it out. 
Now, in order for us to do this, it comes down to the sprite and how we sliced it. So over here, we have sliced it like this, like this, like this, like this. But what we can do is I can click here on the slice. And instead of using the Unity's automatic slice, which is good, by the way, sometimes it cannot differentiate everything. You know, it cannot differentiate every single sprite that you have inside of your sprite sheet, maybe small sprites and so on and so forth. In my Game Development Academy, in my courses, if you follow them, you saw examples for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this grid by cell size. And over here, we can specify by which size we want Unity to cut all of these sprites. Now for the X, I am going to use 177 and for the Y, I'm going to use 255. So 255. And now if I hit the play, <laughs> the play button, the slice button, it is going to slice them equally in equal parts. Look at that. So hit apply and this change is applied to the prefab. So if I go back now over here and select the door and if I try to play the animation right now, look at now how the door is playing. You see, it is going from down to up same as how I want it, it to be. So again, this comes down to how you are slicing these things. And when I say these things, I mean the sprite sheets, how you're slicing them and so on and so forth, yada, 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 you get the point, you see. So you can use this grid by cell size. And if you are wondering, oh, how did you know that you want to use 177 and over here you want to use 255? Well, basically you set that up on your own when you create the image. So this image, the size of this door over here, if you see its width is 177 and the height is 255. And you need to put all of that, so you need to put your image on a piece of paper, so to say. You need to put it on a layer that has the exact width that you want to use to slice. For example, look at this one. This one is sliced here. Look at the position X. It's at zero and the height and the width are the same and Y is the same. If I go over here, look at this one. The, this one X position is 177. For this one is 354. For this one is 531. For this one is 708. You get the point. So when you basically multiply 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with 177, it's not exactly what you get, but you, you get the point. They are organized on the layer in that way so that this automatic or that this grid slicing can actually slice them up. So that is basically what I am saying. So this is when it comes to the door and I'm satisfied how the door looks like. So the, the wall over here has a, it has a minus one for order in layer and this one has zero. I can probably set this one at minus two and the door, yeah, it can stay like this. There you go, it can stay like this. The last part is to take the exit, which is also here inside of our sprite or game sprite. So take the exit, change the sprite mode to multiple and hit the apply button. And over here in the sprite editor, we are going to slice it up. So click here, slice. And did it slice it? Actually, no, it's tried to slice it grid by cell size. So I'm going to slice it up like this. There you go. We have the exit now and hit apply. So going back over here, I'm simply going to take the exit and place it over here. Come on, I believe this is okay. Yep, this can be fine. Maybe I can just, you know, resize it to 0 0.8, 0 0.8, something like that, or even 0 0.9. So 0 0.9, it's actually 0 0.9, not divided by 9. There you go, 0 0.9 over here, like this. And voila. The exit is also going to be a child here under door and exit. And I'm going to fold all of these and I'm simply going to call it exit. And this one is only going to have a animator. So animator and going over here inside of the animations, door animations, right click. This one is going to be the exit animations and over here, right click and create a controller, which is going to be our exit controller and simply attach the exit controller over here. So let's go drag and drop, voila. And inside of the animation tab, create the exit animation. So simply exit. And no, I placed it inside of the door. So here it is. I want to place this one inside of the so animations, exit, there you go. Going back here into the sprite folder, simply dragging, dropping these two frames. What is up? Come on, going here, selecting all of that. There you go. So now it works. 
And let's go over here and simply set that. So set the sample rate and check it out. Yeah, it's blinking too much. So I'm going to go here into the scene now and check it out. Yeah, it's been, it's blinking like crazy, like a, you know, junky person. So I'm going to take this animation, set it to 0.5. Even this one is too, yep, 0.2 can do. There you go. So this is our exit and voila, there you go. So this is when it comes to the door and the exit. Of course, starting from the next video, we're going to program everything when it comes, you know, to how can we unlock the door and so on and so forth. But for that, we need our collectible diamonds. We will see that. Do not worry. Do not panic. If something was not clear when it comes to this lecture, make sure that you ask in the comment down below. But basically, we're just setting up the door. Nothing complicated, nothing hard adding colliders, animations, but if something is not clear, make sure you ask and I will help you out and I will see you guys in the next video.